All right, we're doing more STI stuff today and I'm mixing up frame rates on the camera. We're shooting at 60 frames per second rather than 24. So if you guys prefer 60 frames per second, let me know and we'll swap over to this format other than 24. This should make it a little bit less shaky for you guys. Uh, so even if I move the camera around, it should seem a lot smoother. So with that being said, I got a couple updates for you guys. The BRZ should be showing up here in a couple of days. Now we're still pending on what is going on because I don't know yet but I will definitely keep you guys in the loop with everything that I find. I did talk to the Volkswagen dealership yesterday, and what I do know right now is that the engine passed a compression test. Uh, it's still misfiring. They don't know what's going on with it. They did a whole bunch of tests on it. So they're having some people come out just to put some like bids on the cars to see um, what like the best course of action would be with the Golf R. Um, Cause like I said right now, I just, I don't have the cash to throw at the Golf R. So we're figuring something out right now. I don't know. But anyways, with the SDI, today we're gonna be making some good progress. I'm gonna be tapping into the stock CAN system and rerouting it to the Haltech. And I'm gonna try using a GR CAN protocol. I don't know if it's going to work. It may work for just basic things, we're gonna find out. Uh, I also got the fuel filter in from Radium Engineering that I ordered a couple of days ago, as well as the fuel line that has not showed up yet because I'm still waiting for that to show up. So, uh, start things off today easy. Let's get this fuel filter installed. So on our fuel filter here from Radium, if I can flip that guy around, uh, you gotta order the fittings separate. These are just dash, or they're 10 ORB for the fittings that go in here, and then these are just dash eight. So I had to get, da or I had to get 10 ORB to dash eight males on these, and then they have everything labeled on here. So that's the inlet side that's gonna come from the pump. That's the outlet side that's gonna go to the fuel rail. So uh, we already have the bracket installed. Let's go get that guy down there. Outlet, inlet. There's one broken free. And there's two. I don't think I need to take it all the way out. I think I can just loosen it and slide this guy in and then tighten it. Outlet side is going to face that way. Oh yeah, dude, you can just totally loosen it and then slide that guy in. You gotta love when parts just beautifully fit. And you don't gotta cobble together stuff. Like, don't get me wrong, I cobble together a lot of things sometimes, but having like an actual fuel filter mount up in here, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to show you guys, but fuel filter mounted. Now I just need that dash eight line to show up. Woo! That was quick and easy. I wanna get some braking oil in this thing also, so that way it's not just sitting without oil anymore. I got the uh, drain plug put back on the pan with the new crush washer, so let's get some braking oil put in this thing. Grab my funnel. A lot of you guys were asking where I got this funnel. I got this off Amazon. I'll link this down below. I think it's like 20 bucks or something like that. I'm a messy person when it comes to oil changes, so. Ugh, definitely helps with my messy. Get some oil into our engine, so that way it's not just sitting without oil anymore. I'm definitely gonna have to get some more break-in oil for this engine. All right, so I just went in the back and I fished out some of the like stock style breathers for the heads. Uh, we are gonna be swapping back over to these. As much as I like the Dash 10 fittings that we have on here, uh, they just, they don't fit well with the fuel rail. I don't feel like converting the IEG AOS all to AN, like rubber hose will be totally fine for the uh, the valve cover breathers and the main block breather. So let me get these swapped over real quick. It's only six bolts, three on each side. Easy to swap over. I'll pull the gasket off. I'll put the stock gasket back on these ones. We'll get these guys bolted down. We'll get the AOS hooked up and ran all run all the lines for that a little bit later in this video. Uh, we also need to pull off the coolant crossover too because we have a little bit of modification we do to that. Let me get this off. Swap those out. Let's get that coolant crossover tube pulled off. Those guys are on. Let me grab that coolant crossover. Let's modify it. So a couple things are gonna be happening here with this coolant crossover. A, I need to plug that port right there. I'm also gonna cut this guy off, drill and tap this for a 1 8 NPT plug. So that way in the future, if I would need to run like a coolant sensor or something like that, we have a 1 8 NPT right there. It's just better than cutting it and welding it off. This is gonna be our return for our AOS coolant line back to the radiator um, and then from the water pump and then blah, 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 all the stuff. So let me find a plug for that guy right there. Let me get that guy cut off. We'll get it tapped with our helicoil kit. We should be good to go with this guy. Well, I need to powder coat it again because I totally forgot we welded that guy on there. So let's do uh, let's do what we need to do with this to get this guy done and so we can, you know, just, just get it closer to getting bolted back on the car. Where's my safety squints? Why is my camera always in the way of this drawer? And just like that, there's no more port. Whoa! That was easy. Now I gotta drill that boy for a uh, half inch MPT. 
which I should have a tap for that. Where's my tap kit? Best drill besides for 1 8th MPT tap is a R drill bit. What the fuck is that? MPT taps are generally straight or tapered in shape depending on the type of the job that you're using it for. Well, I don't have an R. Drill bit size, uh, 1 quarter inch drill bit R. What the fuck? does that mean? Oh, it's R because it tapers, just like this 1 8 MPT tapers. That makes sense. I don't have a tapered drill bit. Typically a 21 64th. The hell? What the hell? Let me see if I can find a plug real quick. Well, it appears I was a little bit unprepared for this as I have literally no NPT plugs. Um, and apparently you need a special drill bit because an NPT tapers. So uh, we'll go to Home Depot and Melanie gets home. We'll go grab an R style drill bit. R just tapers in because NPTs as they thread in, they go from like small on the inside to big on the outside. Uh, so we'll go take care of that when she gets home. So now uh, we're gonna jump onto the AOS. I'm gonna go ahead and get these AOS lines made for this car. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for an AOS video of how to run lines. I'll give you a brief rundown after I get mine ran. Mine will be different than most people's out there. However, it will follow the same general principle. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Same general principle. You can put an AOS on any turbocharged car. You just have to adapt it for the car. So uh, let me go ahead and get these lines made up real quick and then we can Keep jetting along. After that, I think we'll jump on the electrical side of things again and uh, start playing with this CAN bus. So I was just checking clearances on all of this. Um, so far, it looks like we're doing pretty good. I also got the stock power steering reservoir back in here. I have the low pressure side hooked up from the rack up to the reservoir. For this guy right here, I'm gonna run a hose like 45 down, go to the side of the frame rail down there, run it across the frame rail, and then come back up to our uh, power steering pump here. The high pressure side, I think IAG makes a line that I can just use for this that I'll see if I'll, I'll check it. Uh, coolant line right here, we still have very good clearance. We got about three inches. The downpipe is getting ceramic coated. So I do have a, uh, like a pint of Cerakote coming for everything that we're gonna be coating, which is gonna be all the exhaust components. Uh, we'll probably wrap the downpipe as well just to help with the heat mitigation. So it'll be ceramic coated and wrapped with heat wrap uh, just to ensure that we have like not crazy high temps. We have the block breather hooked up here and the return. So uh, those were super simple, same as an EJ. We have our big dong that runs down and it runs underneath the car. I've left it long enough so that way I could mount it up to the transmission. So that way it can still move a little bit, uh, but it's not going to flop around, hit like an axle or anything like that so this is going to be pretty standard across all EJs so both coolant lines on an EJ this would go to either the turbo or the upper coolant reservoir whatever one you decide these lines are interchangeable um, both of these are gonna be in the same spot they're both gonna run down to that same block breather those two lines right there are gonna go to the head so the top one's gonna go over to the driver side head the middle one's gonna go to the passenger side head for me I'm trying to figure out how I want to do these because I've got I just don't have a lot of room between the fuel rail and the breather right there. Those dash 10 AN fittings, they, it was a lot tighter of a fit. With this, I can still get the hose on there. It just doesn't look how I want it to. It's not a clean install. So I'll be going back and forth playing with that a little bit. I think I'm gonna try to get some 90s, um, drill out the nipple that's on there and then press a 90 in there or like thread a 90 on there. We'll see what I can find. So that's why I'm gonna hold off on doing the heads for right now, just until I can find like a very clean way that I wanna do it. Um, this here makes things a lot more difficult for <laughs> for trying to finoodle things, at least on this side of the car. So you gotta be very tactical with how you're doing things, just because like like I said, you don't want that downpipe like burning anything or catching anything on fire because that would be worst case scenario. And we're gonna try to avoid that. Same with like this power steering low pressure bracket right down there. I need to trim that and get a new bracket made so that way uh, we're pretty solid on that just because that bushing is so damn close to that downpipe. Once, that, once the rest of that bushing and everything is gone, uh, it'll fit beautifully. So with all that being said and everything that we've gotten done so far, it's looking good. I think next up I'm gonna jump and go play with the can system a little bit in the car and see if I can get the stock can bus 
to read over to our Haltech. So I've got an old connector somewhere over here, right here, connector B136 that goes to the ECU. Now can high and low are gonna be these red and blue wires. Normally they're always gonna be twisted. Can red or the red can wire is our can high, can blue or the blue wires can low. Over here on the Haltech, if we move all of these tools that I have right in the way, the can low for the Haltech is blue, the can high is white. So it's gonna be red to white, blue to blue. So, uh, let's go see if this will work. Let's see if a GR can protocol will work for our STI. Haltech this entire time you gotta be fucking kidding me right now you gotta be pooping on my dude this is a joke this is a joke check this out I'm gonna set the camera up to watch the dash as I spin the wheel what the hell the very bottom right there it says speed check this out oh we got up to three miles an hour I'm gonna try spinning a front wheel is it changing oh my god it is Oh my god, you're telling me this entire time! I could have just plugged those in! Can't, dude, I can't even right now. I literally can't even. You're literally telling me this entire time. I could have just plugged the stock ECU into the Haltech to pull readings? Are you kidding me right now? Are you literally joking? This is absurd. This blows my mind. Let me go back into the software and see what I can change to make things read off of stock sensors to give me AVI inputs back for other things that I want to add in. Dude! I'm shook. I'm literally shook right now. Let me go play in the software. All right, so I've got some more stuff moved around in the Haltech. So those two free AVIs, I'm gonna have one of them do fuel pressure because I'd like to be able, I'd like to have the ECU be able to detect fuel pressure. And I'd also like the pressure switch in the stock power steering pump to work. So both of those AVIs are gonna be rerouted to where they're going to go. Then we pretty much have the wire harness sorted and we, I'm gonna start looming it today. I'm gonna start looming it tonight. So uh, let me get those AVIs pulled back up into the engine bay. Let's start looming up our harness. And then once it's like, one, I'll, I'll like, I'll show you guys here soon. I know this may just look like a cobbled together mess of wires, but at this point, I'm ready to start looming this thing. We have all the sensors in the engine bay sorted, figured out at this point. Everything is good. Everything has the inputs it needs, with the exception of the injectors. I need to redo the grounds on the injectors, uh, mainly because the grounds that I put on there, I thought it was a signal ground from the ECU. It's actually a ground ground, so we'll probably ground it out to either the head or the negative terminal over there on that. So I'm only gonna loom up to probably about right here for right now, uh, just to get that main rear harness section loomed we can go ahead and do those wires up there oh my goodness and all of these over here are spares that we're not using at this point so these are all there's a whole bunch of dpos that i just really don't need there are a whole bunch of five volt sources there's a couple signal grounds in here uh no avis we used all those so all of this i'm just going to end up pushing back through the firewall we'll keep all of that as spare wires and we'll just tuck them up under the dash for right now so whoo Baby boy! Actually, you know what? Before I start looming anything up, uh, let me get all these spares to push through. I'm gonna put some electrical tape on all of these just so that way they all stay in one nice bundle so that way we don't have wire catastrophe underneath of the car, so, or underneath of the dash. So let me get all of these. Uh, I'm just gonna put some tape around them to keep them in bundles. We'll get them shoved under there and then we'll start looming up this. Dude, I'm so pumped. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 
check Give it a microphone, I make them make it a microphone dead Don't step to me newbie, I can truly be moody I could've played the fucking Grinch in the movies I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time That is not a guy that I would ever wanna try to battle rap Snap, crack a pop, mind fried to a crisp Make an MC into a wide-eyed lunatic So far, very happy with the progress we're making on this harness. So uh, we've got the back section loomed up that goes into the firewall, and then I've got this sub harness here all loomed up. These are gonna go to like the map sensor up here, the fuel pressure sensor that's gonna be down there, and the flex fuel sensor. So all those will wrap up and go down to their homes right there. You need to think about doing this strategically. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get the sheathing or like loom harness over all of it. Um, so when you're doing something like this, just keep that in mind that think about it, tactically just don't jump straight into it so next up uh, i'm just gonna keep working on looming all this up so that way we can get it like start getting everything terminated and like plugged into its home so like so far i could do the map sensor the fuel pressure sensor and the flex fuel sensor uh, but i'm gonna wait because i can't do the i can't like pin these until i'm able to sheath till at least like right there but i can't do that till i do some of these so let's get back to wiring Yo, give it a stage in a minute, I'ma eat you El professor's in the house, let me teach you I could defeat you with two hands tied And have you waking in the hospital like, who am I? And who are you? Who are they? What is this? You wouldn't believe us, I'ma react to this shit The mind slips, slips, slipping, speaking in tongues Fly ink, GVA, that's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done, uh That's how we get it done Fly ink, GVA, that's how we get it done, uh All right, so we have seriously made some like killer progress today, you guys. We got the AOS pretty much set up at this point. Uh, we have the rest of our harness figured out, our wheel speed sensors work, the CAN communication, uh, the built-in Subaru CAN communication is talking with the Haltech, and that's all working uh, for the sensors that we can kidnap and reuse. We've got our power steering fluid reservoir back in. The harness is coming along beautifully, you guys. Like, I am so happy with how it's coming out. We're gonna be using a P-clip right here to hold the harness down so that way it's not gonna move. We've got the manifold pressure sensor already like pinned up and ready to go. Ugh. As you guys can see right there, like it is solid. Look that guy back in. It's all, you guys, it's like, we have made way, way more progress today than I was anticipating and I'm about it. So tomorrow I need to go to the store and get some more dual wall heat shrink. I need one inch heat shrink for some of this stuff uh, because for like right here and some, a couple other places where I'm just, I don't have the right size. I have three quarters of an inch and it's just barely too small for what we're doing. So absolutely like super pumped, super pumped. We got like our oil pressure sensor right Right there we've got our coolant temperature sensor right there uh, ethanol sensor fuel pressure sensor all of this stuff is starting to finally come together and it's all actually registering in the ECU so that's where I'm gonna end it today you guys like I said if you guys prefer the 60 frames per second thing we can definitely swap over to this uh, just let me know down in the blow down below in the comments if you'd prefer the 24 that we've been shooting in or the 60 which is like significantly smoother and it doesn't look as shaky as I walk around with the camera anymore but anyways it's all I got for you guys on this one massive progress with the STI it's honestly if we keep up this momentum and we keep up this speed I, re I honestly think we could start the car in about a month about a month I still have to get the coil pack situation sorted out we're I'm not stressing about that right now we'll get that sorted but I'm excited you guys so if you like the video you know what to do go ahead hit that like button turn it black blue green yellow purple silver cyan whatever color it turns for you and if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be one of these corners no idea which one I'll put it in quite yet but with that I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.